like last May about your defensive line depth? Do you feel like you have enough guys that you yeah, can work there, or, or how do you develop? You know, it's a, it's a great, great question because a lot of those guys that were trying to get developed have just got there. You know, we had a, a big D line class that we signed. You know, with uh, um, this last class, and, and I think that they've done a great job in the weight room, but. They're, they're freshmen, you know, and it's hard to play. So I went out and got one hairs back, you know, as a junior college guy. And uh, Marcus Talley is a junior college player as well. But uh, uh, to be able to give us some some mature depth that you need in, in the core. And so to me, it's, it's, it's still playing a lot of guys. You know, Coach Hagan does a great job technically with them. He's trying to grow some of these younger guys, getting them a little bit bigger. You know, we had guys that we need to gain some good weight this, this summer and this off season. So, you know, I guess... Uh, uh, that's when I sit here and look at our team. Yeah, the two things, the two areas of focus of concern are O line depth and D line depth. And so, to me, that's where I think that's going to define, you know, how good we are up front on both sides of the, or how good we are on each side of the ball is, is those two areas. So, not that that changes a lot. You're obviously driven by those guys' production, but by having so many new faces on the D line, there's just question marks for sure. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're gonna. You know, I believe in the, the way we recruited, and, and I think those guys are going to play extremely hard. And by keeping them fresh and not letting them you know, get fatigued, I think that makes a big difference. You know, so I feel like that's a, a strength that's going to be our numbers. We just got to make sure that it would maximize every uh, every rep in fall camp to get the guys ready to play. Why do you think you've had so much success in recruiting? I mean, I used to go after guys who had offers from Miami, Ohio, yeah. Toledo, and now you're going up. Sure. Well, first of all, I think you kind of, uh, you know, I think identified step one, and that is, you know, we're going after uh, guys that I don't care who they got offers from. I mean, if, we, if we think we have a chance to get somebody to come to Indiana, uh, we're not going to back off just because they got offers from a bunch of big-time places. Um, and number two, um, I think that, you know, we identify these guys, and um, I do when I go through like I don't pay as much attention to who what their ranking is I do pay attention to who's offering them because I know which programs are really good evaluators and and I look at that and so it certain places if they offer a certain kid it gets my attention you know some places you know give out offers like candy you know and so it's just doesn't mean as much you know and so and I we're aware of that all right and so what I'm saying is is that there's you know we're trying to go after really good football players that fit with us and the bottom line is is we're only as good as the guys we're coaching you know and the scheme is only as good as the players run the scheme you know I I love defense, and I feel like we have a great system. But our system is a whole lot better when the guys running it are more talented. So that's that's a pretty obvious statement. But you better go get good players. And so to me, it's relationships. And then when the head coach is the is the top recruiter on the t staff, that's the way it needs to be. And that's my approach. It's, it's going to be that way. And I want to be the best recruiter on the staff. And and I want these coaches to understand how important it is to us to get the best players. And it takes a ton of time, a lot of work. A lot of hours, and and it's it's been paying off, and we've been getting players on our team that that are you know considerably you know you know different than we've had in the in the past, and so now we got to just keep getting more of them, and we got to keep shoring up the old line and the D line, you know, that's and that's the area that's the hardest to find. It's hard to find big guys that can move, and so that's why they're put at a premium, you know. So that continues to be a focus for us is to find more of those linemen, and so but uh, you know we're we're selling. You know the family atmosphere, and it's not just a, you know, hey, this is what it sounds good in recruiting. They're figuring out, hey, this is how they really are. And I think you hear the word genuine a lot from recruits and their families, and and we just want to be real with people. And I just want to be real with these recruits, and 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 I tell these guys, our our best salesmen are the ones that are here, you know, and and the guys, especially the class that just got here. And they were a highly regarded class, and and I asked them, I said, was this what you thought? Did, did we do a good job of preparing you for what it was going to be like being here? Like, coach, 
I really do. You, you, you are who we thought you were going to be, and you're treating us the way you told us you would. And you're, and you know, so and I and I say, hey, you tell tell the recruits that, tell the kids on their visit that, you know, because it, it's way more powerful coming from them. Have your parents, you know, tell their parents that, you know, and it's like, so a lot of these kids are from the same area too, and so you get a chance to get that kind of a connection. So I just want to you know, say, hey, just just tell the truth, you know, and this is how it's going to be when you come here. So to me, that's that's what's resonating with them, and and then also I think we got a great product to sell. I think Indiana is a great place to get your degree from. And it's a great place to go to school. It's a beautiful campus, and we're now building facilities that are, you know, on par with others, and, and that hasn't always been the case. And so that sends a strong message to the parents and the recruits that football is important at Indiana. And and I and I love uh, what we're doing, and I love what we're building, And it's, but it just takes time. And that's where, I mean, I wish it was happening faster. I wish it happened two years ago, you know, but at the same time, I haven't changed in my resolve and my focus and what I believe we're going to do, and so we just got to, that's why grit, that's why I picked grit this year, because that needs to signify who we are as a program. Just keep persevering, just keep having the same passion, having the same energy, having the same focus, and do not let up until we get what we want, and then when we get what we want, we're going to set new goals. Coach, you led me into my question. Um, getting kids to Bloomington, I, I'm in Indiana, we live in northern Indiana, but you know, Indiana hasn't had the tradition in football for a long time, and building the program up, building some momentum, because let's face it, the Big Ten Conference is one of the toughest. You've got to compete all the time with these kids. But once you get them to Bloomington, um, what's it like getting the kids there and building this tradition that you're basically building? Well, what you're doing is you got to think of it this way. So the, the guys we're recruiting, all right, since they've been born, okay, they've never seen us win a bowl game. They weren't even born when that last happened, okay. So we don't really even focus on that, okay. We're focused on the future. You know, and I and I came up with uh, and I borrowed this quote from from somebody else, but the whole concept was and I just shared it with our staff not too long ago that yeah, we're we're going to focus all of our energy on what we're building, okay, and everything that we are becoming, and not what we have been, okay, or haven't been. We don't even talk about that, okay. And I tell our coaches, I mean, it, we we just focus on the future, and, and I'm trying to create a, an expectation, and, and and when players come, because the whole point is, and you, you listen to these young guys talk. Our recruits, what they talk, they came here to change this place. Okay, they came here. You know, the, the 2018 group. You know, really, I guess it's the 2019 class after we, we signed last season. Um, you know, Taiwan Mullen came up with that, the phrase, the new wave. Okay, and he he came up with that. He really did, and it kind of it stuck with all those guys. As a matter of fact, I I was walking by because they all work out together, and we have the, all the freshmen in one lift group, and so they broke it down on. Like new wave on whatever that was how they broke it. That was just something that they. But that's what they. That's how they think. They came here to create the change, and, and I love it. And they came to be the reason why that things are different than they used to be. And so that's why I want kids that want that. And sometimes, like I said, I'll go wherever we got to go across this country to get those kids. I want someone that believes that we're going to do it. Bottom line, I don't care what state you're from. I don't care where you. I don't care. I really don't. We're going to start, and I want, I want. I'd love to have a whole roster full of Indiana guys. Okay, but if those guys choose to go somewhere else. Then you know what? I wish them well, and I go get guys that want to be here. And then we're going to go beat your tail when you don't come to Indiana. And that's the way I think. And I want them to regret that they didn't come here two or three years from now. I do. That's what I, I believe. I want them to regret that they didn't come. You know, but that's okay. And I don't. You know, yeah, I do take it personal because I believe in what we're doing. But I'm going to go find guys that believe with us. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're finding these guys that want to come here and they want to invest in this place and they want to be a part of the future of Indiana football and create that future. And that's what we're doing. And that's what we're selling to these families. And, and the kids are really buying into it. Thanks, Tom. You, 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 you compete in what, probably the most competitive division in sports or in college football. Is there too much imbalance between the two divisions? And do you think that there needs to be some sort of realignment or adjustment uh, to make it a little bit more even? You know, I've been asked it several times, and and uh, I know when I was in the SEC, they had the big discussion that the West was too it was too you know too many good teams in the West, and they needed to move somebody to the East and all that you know. So, but if you would have looked at it when I was a high school coach um, in Florida, in the, in the mid '90s, it was the other way around. You know, where the East of that conference was. So, I mean, I think you could you know our division aren't as aren't as long standing as theirs, and so I think if you let time unfold itself, that it will probably balance itself back out on a perception. But I just know this: we we play. You know, since I've been here, I think we've played everybody in the conference, and 
they not, they're all tough. You know, I mean, every game has been a battle, you know. So, I mean, I, I just – they can splice them and slice them however they want. We'll just play who they tell us to play. You know, I know it's a big, it seems to be a big topic. I've been asked it several times even today. But, but uh, you know, they may decide to do that. I don't know. But I promise you this, they're not going to ask me. You know, you ask me, but they don't ask me. You know, so they'll tell us where we're supposed to play. And the bottom line is we got to beat the teams on our schedule. And we play in the Big Ten. And so it's tough football. Do you think the reception is apt? That the East is well, than the West. I think if you go back and like look at raw numbers of championships, you know that's that shows a certain thing. If you want to look at those stats, you know, um, and so I just think that that's that's pretty obvious. But at the same time, you know, like I said, we play we've played them all since I've been here, and they're all good. So you know, it's going that's not going to change. Do you believe having a college age son that? plays on the team gives you any kind of special insight into what recruits are looking for today? It does because, you know, I don't think necessarily like they do, you know, and, and with social media for sure, you know, where they spend their time, it has helped me quite a bit, you know, and, and uh, having young coaches, our GAs, they're some of the best ones because they're just not far removed from that either, you know, so we talked to them quite a bit about, matter of fact, we did, they, they had a guy come in and do like a social media presentation and one of our GAs like, he nailed every single question the guy was asking and I didn't like no hardly any of them, you know, so it just showed you the, the gap between, you know, guy my age and kids in their early 20s, you know, so, especially the social media component, so yeah, having, you know, Thomas is a, you know, even just for the pulse of our team, I mean, I, we talk about it, you know, and just how things, just, and, and he's not like, he, he understands, and I don't put him in a tough position, but it's just good to have somebody that's, you know, on the inside that kind of says, you know, hey, this is a good thing, this is that, you know, you need to think about this or think about that, so I, I think it helps, I think it really does. Coach, you're talking about adding depth to, to the, your program. Last year, the rule change allowed guys to play four games. Mm -hmm. How integral was that for a program like yours mm -hmm. uh, in, in increasing that depth? Thought it was big. You know, you can look at the guys that played, you know, and a guy like James Miller, prime example. You know, he, he in a normal year, he would have burned a whole year for playing a few snaps. He, he made some big plays, you know, and he got, but he got a chance to play. He got, you know, that to me is a prime. Even, even you know, Michael Pence, I know he gets injured, but he played those games and he still got his freshman year back. And, and so, but just, I, I think, I thought it was a great rule when it got implemented and uh, voted in and I was excited about it. And after a year seeing it in place, I thought it was awesome, you know, and I, I'm looking forward to it being another chance for us to. I wish we would have had it earlier. You know, we got some guys that, that are older now that played in a very few games as freshmen that are seniors now that, you know, you just wish you had that. It's a valuable year. You can't take that time back, you know, and that, that development you get that age is, is pretty important. So if a guy's ready to play and he's going to play the whole year, that's great. But if he's not, the four game rule is, is a huge change for our game. After Mike retires, what's that process like to find his replacement? Is it making phone calls? Do you watch film? Just find your next OC? Is it looking at the contacts you have in the industry? How does that process work? Yeah, you always have a list. You know, I have a list of every position of guys that, that I would like to go after if a guy chooses to go take another job somewhere else or be a head coach or be a coordinator if he's a position coach. And so um, I uh, had, you know, and, and Coach DeBoer, it came to me, you know, even b before Christmas and just said, you know what, hey, I haven't made my decision yet, but I'm just, you know, thinking about it. So, which was good. It gave me, a, I said, well, hey, that's good to know. And so I got a chance to put some feelers out. And so, uh, yeah, so it basically was, uh, you know, trying to, in the combination of guys that I knew and, and had on that list and then other guys that, you know, through the course of, you never know, timing is always, you know, a big deal and everything. And so some guys' opportunity to be available in, at this time period. But I will say, you know, we really, you know, Kalen was the guy I wanted from the beginning. You know, I just uh, I just have known him for a long time and, and so much respect for him and, and a lot of commonalities with us and the way we do things and, and the guys he's worked for and I've worked for, we, we, you know, there's a lot of crossover. So I knew exactly, even though we've never work together I knew what I was getting as a, as a coach and as a man so uh, it was uh, you know but we interviewed several guys and you know but he our, our staff they all once he interviewed they were like he's the guy they, they knew how often do you update this list is it once a year is it yes. once every off season every off season yeah go through every position and sit down and just update it for sure